Well, hello to you, you lovely people. Today's the 28th, it's a Monday, and it's time again for what has been my, my most popular format from from Vader. Because I've noticed that these videos get like twice as many views, I mean it's still only 40 something views, but still twice as many views as any other Vader video. Probably because I actually promote these on Facebook as well, because it's Eurovision related, it's my top 37 minus one. Now, today we're going through positions 9 down to 1, so I, I think it'd be a good idea for me to just recap what my top 37 has been so far. Obviously, I'm not counting the UK because I'm from the UK, but starting from the bottom, we've had Malta, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Netherlands, Estonia, Azerbaijan, Lithuania, Romania, Georgia, Denmark, Israel, Greece, Spain, Portugal, Finland, Moldova, Montenegro, Poland, Germany, Belarus, FYI Macedonia, Belgium, Albania, Russia, Italy, and sneaking to the top 10, Ukraine. So, let's just pick up where we left off in the top 10. Position number 9, uh, meaning of course they get 2 points from me, is Hungary. Now, the Hungarian song this year keeps up the Magyar tradition of sending really strong songs. It's certainly as of 2012, if not 2011, because that was considered a bit of a fan wank at the time, but still. So two years ago, we had the criminally underrated Sound of Our Hearts, which came really low, which is tragic. And last year, we had the adorable hipster by Alex singing Ked Vashem, and now we have something very, very different compared to both of them. Now, Andres's song is... well, that came out weird. And Andres Kelisondas' song is very emotive and very powerful, and it's even more so when coupled with the video and the choreography. It's just sort of mind-blowing, really. Um, I mean, uh, it, what distracts me slightly is the the dancer in the mask kind of looks like no face when spirited away, cannot unsee, but still, it's really, really powerful, it's emotive, it's, it's, it's also a good song on top of all that by itself. But, just one thing I need to clarify, for the last time, the song is about physical, well, it's about general abuse, not sexual abuse. The video makes this quite clear. The song itself tells of... A story of a girl who gets frequently beaten by her father, not raped. Please fact check before jumping to conclusions about this song. Okay? Now the song itself does generally refer to the idea of anyone being abused by anyone, but the song itself, the lyrics specifically refer to a girl being beaten by her father. Not anything else, don't read into it just so you can have a reason to hate on it, okay? And I am thinking of a specific group of people who I'm saying this to as well. Now, position number eight. Switzerland. Yes, Switzerland has earned three points from my corner of the room. As I said in my review, this one has been on my radar since long before the Swiss national final. Not as a strong contender, mind, but as a song that I really quite like listening to, even if Sebastiano's accent can be a little bit impenetrable at times, especially with lyrics that already don't make much sense. Like, you know, just, just look at the lyrics, it, it doesn't make too much sense. Like an evil satellite twisting the truth and leaving us alone. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just leave you to it, Sebastiano. You just do your thing. <sighs> no spaghetti were harmed in the making of this video. But, sadly, Switzerland's song is one of those ones this year that people just immediately dismiss because it's too happy. I mean, what the fuck, people? It's happy and it's carefree. And like, it annoys me quite a bit that people just have this stuck-up attitude that, Oh, it's happy, I can't like it. Oh, come on, it's a happy song. Get over yourself. Seriously. If you think that this song's bad just because it's happy, then seriously, just just take a moment, look at yourself, and just get over yourself. Now, position number seven, receiving four points from me, France. So, speaking of get over yourself, here's another really happy song that I'm really rather fond of, that people are just going to dismiss. Now, again, it's one that I've had my eye on since its announcement, because I'm already aware that Twin Twin are a bit of an unusual group, and for all the right reasons, because... They are... different. <laughs> that, that's the only word to describe them, they are very different. Uh, their song for the contest this year is fun, it's modern, it's catchy, and it's unabashedly French, which is definitely something they could take pride in. Now, two things that will probably get in the way of the song doing well are the juries, who, like I said, will almost definitely discard it for not being a ballad, and Twin Twin themselves. Now, I don't want to be nasty about them, because they are a very nice group, they're very nice people. But their performance in Amsterdam at Eurovision Concert really wasn't their best. I don't know whether it was the like the, the microphones or 
I don't know what it was, but I hope that they can prepare themselves thoroughly in time for the final of Copenhagen. I hope they don't get, like, cocky or anything. I, I want them to do their best, because they have a good song, and I don't want it to... I don't want it to go sour for them just because of something they could have avoided. So, yeah, France. Now then, sixth place, and getting five points from me, Slovenia. Another example of a really quite modern song done really well. I love it, what more can I say? There wasn't really much I could think to say about the Slovenian song, it's just I really, really like it. The flute is incorporated beautifully into the song, the vocals are powerful and well done, and they've handled the bilingual nature of the song really, really well, because I know certainly they had misgivings about whether or not to send it either just in Slovene or in English or in a mixture of both. They've gone for the bilingual version, which I'm really happy about. I mean, I'm an advocate of using whichever language suits. I'm not saying you have to sing in your language, but but I'm also not saying you have to sing in English. So if they go for a bilingual version and it works, then good on them. And that's what they're doing. Uh, one thing, though, if Scandinavian bias holds true yet again this year, then Slovenia might actually break the universal truth that only one out of Norway or Slovenia can qualify for the final each year. Either that, or Norway just won't qualify because this this has to qualify. Slovenia's song is really good, and Norway's really isn't in comparison. Now, I do admit, as might be evident in my review of the song, I had my doubts about it at first, but it, it's grown on me, and it grew on me quite quickly. So, I do wish Tinkara and her group the best for her country, because Slovenia really do... They're, they're really... They're really trying hard this year. I, I, I can't think of any other way of saying it. Now then, fifth place on my top 37, Ireland. No, this isn't neighbour voting, just because I'm from the UK. I'm giving Ireland my six points this year, because I truly like their song. Now this one I identified as a strong contender to win the national final, back when it was announced. I don't know how far it would go in the actual contest, but it was definitely the best of the national final, because the Irish have a habit of having four weak songs and then one strong one, and then being surprised when that wins, but... Anyway, I did warn at the time that this song would be met with criticism for being too similar to Emily de Forest's style in the, in the eyes of the fans. Even though it clearly isn't in reality, it's just because, oh, it has Celtic instruments. Um, yes. It's Irish. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I was right about that, but thankfully, the whole criticism of it, oh, it's too much like Emily de Forest, that died down almost instantly. So people seem to have acknowledged that it's of a vaguely similar genre to Emily de Forest's key style but it's not similar enough to warrant comment. Now, I have seen the Irish song being criticised for being a bit too cheesy and cliché, and perhaps it is, perhaps it would belong better in the contest of maybe four or five years ago, but I still think it's a contender enough to take part this year. I don't think it'll trouble the top five, maybe the top ten, possibly top fifteen. I, the only way I can think it might bomb like they did last year is if they perform really badly on the night, because I feel similarly about Ryan Dolan's song from last year, I, th I thought it was just, it was really good, and that it sort of didn't do very well because, I don't know, sad face. But anyway, position number four, Latvia. Now hold on, don't fire all your shots yet, this is only in fourth place, taking seven points from me, but the hate I have seen for this song drives me absolutely ballistic. Like, I appreciate that people have the right to an opinion, but there's no need to make unnecessarily stupid remarks about the song. It's cute, it's happy, and it's a solid song. Just it's about cake doesn't mean it's not a serious, if admittedly light-hearted, Eurovision song. Like, don't write it off just it's not a wailing Swedish wench who took seven attempts to get to the contest. Sorry, was that out loud? No, indeed. Latvia have chosen quite possibly the most kawaii song in Eurovision history. Deal with it! Like, it's a happy song. It's not crap, it's not shit, it's not the worst song you've ever heard. It's not the worst song of the national final, oh, Latvia, why did you pick it? No. It's a happy, cute song, and if you don't like that, you know, that's your opinion. But if you can't deal with that, there's something kind of wrong with you in the head, and I suggest just calming down. Like, you don't have to like the song, but don't hate on it just because it's happy. Duh. Now then, calming down. Third place, and getting eight points from me, San Marino. See, I told you you want to save some of your shots to fire now. Yes, tie me to a stake, set fire to said stake, and then lock said burning stake in a small room and throw away the key, I like San Marino's song. I don't care if you think it's intrinsically crap because Ralph Siegel, or that you think it sounds like a low-budget tryhard, or whatever you want to call it. This song is what everyone wanted of Chris Halliday last year. This song is Chris Halliday, but without the stuff that people criticised Chris Halliday for. So it has pop elements, it has balladish elements, but it doesn't have the transition between the two that everyone 
didn't like. It has all the right things that people love about Griselda, and yet people are like, nope, 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 it's cheap, it's terrible, Ralph Siegel, bleh. I think, no, don't do that. This, the only reason why people don't consider it to be a contender this year, I think, is because it's not a surprise anymore. It's not a surprise to see Valentina singing this sort of song. Like, what I mean is there's less of a contrast between Chriselle Day and its sequel than there is between Chriselle Day and the Social Network song. And maybe, might not be the strongest song in, in the Moneta repertoire, but goddammit, it's a brilliant song. It's just not as different from her previous song as Chriselle Day was from the Social Network song, so it doesn't seem quite as surprising, so it's not quite so much a <gasps> Valentina might be a contender after all kind of situation like it was last year. Now, second place, earning my ten points, the lovely Conchita Wurst for Austria. Now, I'm not even going to comment on the fact that she and Tom Neuwirth make an inspirational figure for anyone out there who feels discriminated against, not just transgender people, because I'm fairly sure Conchita said that she's not actually transgender, it's just... I don't know. But what I will say, though, is that Rise Like a Phoenix stood out to me from first listening as a strong song that could seriously go places. And I don't even like using that phrase, so, you know, I'm serious. Now, it could easily be just another ballad, but it isn't. It's a fully-fledged Bond-theme-esque explosion of style and individuality. And as I said in my review, I really, really admire Austria for not trivialising Conchita's gender as a means of trying to garner votes. So they get quite a bit of respect from me, as well as the fact that I just straight up like their song, because it could quite easily just not be as good as it is and still be a passable song. But no, they've gone extra well. They've, they've done really well. I like it. And now, finally, besides Molly, who, let's face it, would easily top my personal chart, personal bias or none, but that leaves just one artist who takes the 12 points from me from the United Kingdom, or certainly my United Kingdom. Indeed, in first place, at the very top of my top 37 minus 1, no point in these delaying tactics, because by process of elimination you will have already worked out, it's Aram MP3 for Armenia. Now, Not Alone was another song that seriously stood out to me on first listening. Now, I was in a hotel in Newcastle at the time, visiting my soon-to-be university, but I set some time aside to listen to the Georgian song and the Armenian song, because they'd just been announced on day. I mean, San Marino technically had been as well, but I heard that before I left the previous night, because it was leaked beforehand. But I set some time aside to listen to the Armenian song, and it completely blew me away on first listening. Now, the, I suppose it's the unique idea of it being a dubstep ballad. I, like, for that, it's amazing in and of itself. And again, even though the lyrics are a bit minimalistic in the sense department at some points, the song clearly has meaning, and there's power behind it, and Aram is definitely capable of delivering it on the night. It's... I predict, I'm predicting a third place finish for it, because it seems like it would do the same thing that, um, that Zhelko Aksimovich did in 2012, that Zlata did last year, and that um, Eric Slaughter did in 2011. So, I'm not sure what the songs have in common, but there's some kind of common thread that I can see in my mind but can't explain. So, I mean, he will definitely do well. They get 12 points from me. It's, well, I don't know. He might not do quite as well if he makes any more remarks and in interviews that people might take to be homophobic. I don't know. But yeah, that's my top 37. So shoot me, I like some songs that people might not like. It's my opinion. Deal with it! Deal with it. It'll deal with it fireworks for, for haters, because haters gonna hate. Um, you know what? I think I had an idea for an ending for this video, but I forgot what it was, so I'm just going to... Yeah. Fucking disco ball. I have opinions. Deal with them. <laughs>